Hello everyone. How are you? And today we'll be talking about a movie called Bird Box directed by Emmy winner Suzanne Beer. Bird Box is a thriller starring Academy Award winner Sandra Bullock, John Malkovich, Sarah Paulson, and Trevante Rhodes. Get ready for some spoilers ahead. The film starts with a woman named Mallory Hayes telling two kids, known only as boy and girl, that they are going to take a dangerous trip across the water, and she stresses how urgent it is that they keep their blindfolds on as they head outside. Mallory grabs a box with her pet birds inside and guides the kids outside by following a string trail before finding the boat and hopping in on the river. Five years earlier, Mallory is an artist who is pregnant. She is visited by her sister Jessica, and the two watch a news report on unexplained mass suicides that started in Siberia, and is now spreading across Europe. Jess notices Mallory's painting, which she says symbolizes a lack of connection, but Jess tells her that it won't be like that with the baby. She then offers to escort Mallory to the doctor. Mallory visits Dr. Lapham and makes jokes with Jess about drinking while pregnant. Lapham doesn't find the comments too humorous and offers Mallory an alternative to let someone adopt the baby if she feels she isn't ready to raise it. On their way out of the office, Mallory and Jess notice a woman they passed earlier now acting erratic and banging her head against the glass window. They realize that whatever was affecting people in Europe and Siberia has now arrived in America. They run outside just as the chaos is happening, with people crashing their cars in the street. Jess drives Mallory away, but not long after, Jess's eyes turn a weird color as she starts to appear frightened by something only she can see. She drives frantically, with Mallory trying to keep her on the road, but Jess flips the car and crashes. They survive, but Jess is still under a trance, and Mallory can only watch as her sister steps in front of a truck. Mallory runs along with everyone else. She is knocked over and falls in front of a house. A woman named Lydia steps out of her house to go help Mallory, even as her husband Douglas objects to it. Before Lydia can help Mallory up, she appears to go into a trance and seems to be talking to her mother. Lydia walks into a burning car that soon explodes. A man named Tom helps Mallory up and runs into the house. They are followed by a cop named Lucy. Also in the house are Greg, the homeowner, Charlie, Felix, Cheryl, and a couple named Jason and Samantha. The latter two flee the house when they hear their son over the phone sounding like he's in danger. The other people all tell each other what they have seen and those who have been afflicted by this mysterious force. Charlie suspects that the entity is caused by demons that take the form of one's deepest sadness or greatest loss. They all realize that the entity is invisible and that looking at it will cause one to commit suicide. Mallory steps away from the group, and Tom goes to comfort her as she tells him what happened to Jess. The group then boards up the doors and place newspapers on the windows to prevent anyone from looking outside. In the present day, after six hours on the river, Mallory and the children continue to go down the river as it is now pitch black. Mallory makes attempts to contact people over the radio, and she starts to hear the entity whispering her name. Back in the past, a survivor named Olympia pleads to be let in the house. Douglas tries to prevent this, but Mallory grabs a rifle just in case. The others carefully allow Olympia into the house, and they see that she is also pregnant. Greg then offers to observe whatever is outside by checking out the transmitters in the house. He sits in front of the computers waiting to see something on the monitors, and then it looks as though he does. And then the others hear a thumping coming from the room. They rush upstairs in time to see Greg tip himself over and smash his head against an edge, killing him. The others then destroy the computer monitor. Later that night, Olympia tries to talk with Mallory over their potential baby names, but Mallory just wants to be left alone. She walks around and thinks she hears a thumping noise in the house, but she finds it's just Lucy and Felix hooking up. 14 hours on the river. Mallory hears the voice of a man calling out and saying it's safe to take the blindfolds off, but Mallory orders the kids not to do so. He claims he has food and that he has seen the entity, saying there's no reason to be scared of it. Mallory takes out her gun and fires blindly, just before the man attacks her and tries to take her blindfold off. Mallory fights the man and kills him by hacking at him with a machete. Back in the past, the group has begun to run out of food. Mallory, Tom, Douglas, Lucy, and Charlie get together to go to the supermarket where Charlie used to work since he locked the place up as things went sideways. They paint over the windows and use the GPS to guide them. On the road, they feel that they are driving over dead bodies and try to ignore it. 
The GPS then starts going off over a proximity alert, meaning the entity is surrounding them. Tom manages to drive them out of harm's way. They get to the market and grab as much food as they can. Mallory sees some birds that she decides to take with her as pets. Suddenly, they hear the voice of Charlie's co-worker Fish Fingers locked in a freezer and begging to be let out. He then starts going on about how the entity is beautiful and must be seen. Fish Fingers starts to break out while Lucy, Tom, and Douglas try to hold him back. Charlie then sees the entity and realizes he is doomed. Charlie dies, letting the others return home. Fish Fingers' voice is still heard begging to be let out. That night, Mallory briefly bonds with Douglas over their personal problems. The others then hear what sounds like the car being driven away. They go into the garage and find that it's gone, and so are Lucy and Felix. 24 hours on the river. Mallory stops rowing to take a break. When she resumes, she bumps the boat into a sunken truck, and Boy falls out of the boat, but Mallory pulls him out and tries to warm him, but the food and blankets have fallen into the river, so she does her best to warm Boy up. She leaves the kids in the boat as she heads into the woods to try and gather food. Mallory enters a building where she hears a noise and sees things moving on their own, being pulled by the entity. She manages to make her way out of the building, but the entity continues to whisper her name. Mallory fires her gun at the unseen entity, which girl hears, and so she leaves the boat to help Mallory, but she finds girl and grabs her, scolding her for leaving the boat as they return to it. In the past, Tom tells Mallory about how he was stationed in Iraq, and he and his comrades would follow a man as he was escorting his kids to school in the middle of all the chaos. The two of them also start to develop feelings for each other. Olympia lets a desperate man named Gary into the house. The others aggressively search and interrogate Gary. He tells the others that some escaped mental patients came after him and his friend, forcing the two of them to look at the creatures. Gary's friend fought one of them, allowing him to get away and run to the house. He says there are also people outside not wearing blindfolds, willingly trying to see the creatures and wanting others to see them. Douglas doesn't trust Gary and tries to force him out of the house at gunpoint, but Cheryl knocks him out and lets Gary stay, and they lock Douglas in the garage. Olympia tearfully apologizes for letting Gary in and says she feels like a burden, but Mallory tells her she isn't. Olympia then asks Mallory to take care of her baby if something happens to her, and Mallory agrees. She then gives Olympia a Hello Kitty toy to give the baby. 38 hours on the river. We see girl holding the Hello Kitty toy, indicating she is Olympia's daughter. Mallory gets herself and the kids under a blanket to warn them that they are approaching the rapids, and that it will be the most dangerous part of the journey. Past. Both Mallory and Olympia begin to go into labor. While Tom and Cheryl help the women, Gary takes out a bunch of drawings of the creatures, as he is one of the crazy people who has seen them and wants others to see them. He takes Mallory's birds and puts them in the fridge, since they appear to sense and alert others to danger, before tearing the papers off the windows, which Douglas observes. Gary opens the garage door to try and get rid of Douglas. Meanwhile, Olympia gives birth to a girl while Mallory gives birth to a boy. Gary enters the room and pulls the blinds up in front of Olympia. She hands Mallory her baby right before she jumps out the window. Gary then forces Cheryl to open her eyes to the outside, causing her to kill herself with scissors. Douglas comes in with the rifle, but cannot shoot with his eyes open and is afraid to hit Mallory and the babies. He manages to shoot Gary in the arm, but he kills Douglas by stabbing him with the scissors. Tom then sees the rifle and tries to grab it, as does Gary. Two gunshots are heard, but Tom is seen alive going to be with Mallory and the babies. It is now five years later, just before the start of the film. Mallory and Tom have been living together, raising the two kids, but Tom calls Mallory out for not connecting with them or even giving them names. They hear something outside, and it's some people driving their cars out with no blindfolds or covers on the windows. Mallory starts setting up her system outside as a warning for the kids. At night, the two receive a radio transmission from a man named Rick, who says he is at a safe compound with plenty of supplies and food. He instructs them on how to make it to the compound down the river, telling them how dangerous it is to go down there with children, and how they will need to see in order to get through. Rick tells them to follow the sound of birds to find the place. Outside, the survivors from earlier make it to the house. Tom goes to confront them while Mallory and the kids get out safely. The survivors, led by Whistling Marauder, order Tom to take off his blindfold. When they spot Mallory and the kids, Tom fires and kills three of the marauders before he takes one shot himself. 
Mallory then gets the kids together to head onto the river. It has now been 42 hours on the river, and they are fast approaching the rapids. They reach the bumpy waters, which Mallory tries to get through, but the boat flips over and everyone falls out. Mallory calls out to the kids and finds boy in the water, while girl has made it to the land, and Mallory finds her because girl has a bell that she keeps ringing. The three then walk through the woods where the entity whispers to them and uses all its power to try and get them to see, but Mallory's will is stronger, and she gets the kids to listen to her and not look. She follows the sounds of the birds as they make it to the compound, but the entity surrounds them as she tries to make it inside until someone opens the door and lets them in. Mallory's eyes are checked, and she and the kids are cleared for entry. They meet Rick, and Mallory discovers that the compound is a school for the blind, and the people in there are protected from the entities. Mallory and the kids then find Dr. Lapham, who happily greets them. She asks the kids their names, and Mallory finally names them, girl is named Olympia after her mother, and boy is named after Tom. Mallory proudly says they are her children and she is their mother. Mallory then opens her bird box and frees the birds to be with the others in the sanctuary. So what do you guys think about this movie? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my video, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.